Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, today I'm gonna disassemble this Predator carburetor. Um, I have a feeling this one has been around the block a few times. I noticed that the front cover bolts are large, a lot larger than uh, the factory bolts. And I noticed some of the bolts in the base plate also, there's uh, about two of the standard looking ones and, and the rest look look like someone's changed them out. Um, so, go ahead and tear it down, see if we find anything else with it. And once we do that, we get it all disassembled, and then I'll do a video on the cleaning and, and prepping and maybe some modifications to it while it's apart. And then, and then of course, we'll do the reassemble uh, with all new gaskets, maybe new small parts, whatever, whatever we gotta get for it. Alrighty, and then we'll, we'll probably test it on the flow bench, and then we'll uh, set it on an engine and see how she runs, see if there's any leaks or any problems with it or anything, and we'll tune it on that. Alright guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and start disassembling it. I laid out the tools here, hopefully I got everything I need so I don't have to get up and walk away and everything, but so the first thing I like to do is take the cover off, okay? I'll take the air horn off, which is four, four bolts, which also takes the bracket off for the uh, air cleaner. So we'll take that off first. Let me see. Uh, cool. All right. Just have you, if you're going to be uh, tearing yours down, I don't have a box with me today just for the video, but normally when you take it apart, have everything inside of like a, kind of a flat long box to lay all your parts in, or put them in uh, freezer bags, or you know, like the uh, court bags or whatever you got there. But for now, I'm going to lay everything right there. So basically, that's without the top. You can actually run these things, you don't have to have the air horn. Uh, a lot of... A lot of guys run without the air horn. They leave it open just like that. So the air horn does act as helps the ventory. I think it's kind of it's got it going on in here. And you don't have to have this, of course. And it, if you if you remove this, you can still bolt the air horn right back on. Same same bolts, same spot. All right, now let's go ahead and take this bolt off here to remove that back cover. All right, this is just like a dust cover. Basically, there's nothing, no gasket or anything. If yours, like the older 5000 series, if it isn't slotted right here, it might just be round. Well, then you're gonna need to take this lever off right here. You're gonna have to take that off, take that all off so you can slide that out. And then once you do that, you can always modify that. Just cut it yourself. All right, that's how the five, a lot of the 5000 series this have a, just a hole there only. All right, going back to the air horn, I didn't mention uh, it does have a gasket, okay? So that's one of the gaskets you'll be replacing. All right, now we'll go ahead and take the front cover off. There's nine bolts that hold it on, so. That's why I like using this little gun. I guess if you have a T-handle or something like that, it'll work too. Well, except I don't really have the right Allen. These are homemade, I just get a Allen, I cut it, and then I find a socket that fits it. These are very simple carburetors to actually rebuild. You'll see there's not a whole lot of real small parts. There's some, but nothing like conventional. And uh, also, there's not a lot of passages 
like in a conventional, you have to make sure you clean all those passages out. Get all those passages cleaned real good. There's very minimal um, passages in a predator. Basically, basically all done right here in the front. So, all right. So let's move these out of the way. All right. So there's the front cover, and here's the gasket, and that is not the original gasket, I'll tell you that right now, that's a that's a homemade gasket, all right? So, maybe because the holes are over, are drilled. But that's your cover, which covers the float assembly, the spool assembly, the cam right there, and you can see the spool moving. You see a little, you see a little ball right there as we're moving it. All right. So what we want to do is go ahead and we're going to take the float assembly out. So if you look real close, right there, you're going to see a little, little clip. Hopefully, these guys work. All right. There's your clip. And there's a spring. There's the spring. And then there's your float. You can also take this out first if you wanted to, but it, either way, the float come out really easy as you can see. But we'll go ahead and take this out now. Uh, take it out before or after, it doesn't really matter. This is your gross valve or your fuel inlet, you know, they. Basically, it's got a little ball here, and it's a little chuck valve is what it really is from the fuel. All right. Now, basically, that's what you're looking like in there. Now, you're down to a spool and a cam. So next, I'd go ahead and take this cam out. Two screws, usually Phillips. So far, you can see it's very simple. Nothing crazy. And these carburetors have no jets. All it works off is the spool right here that we're taking apart. And those cams, you can change those cams to rich in it. You got like three, three different cams, number one, number two, and number three. And it, it'll uh, actually rich in it. I'll show you that right here. So this is a number one cam. You have a number two for a little more richer. Then number three, even more, but what's cool about these, see how this is elongated here? You can actually loosen that up, loosen this one up, and you can advance or retard this on the spool, just like you kind of do a, a regular camshaft. So really cool, cool deal. That's basically your jetting right there. No little jets, the fun little animals. That's it, right there. Now, that's what you got. Without the, without the cam in there see you have the, this is all that does is move this guy up and down that's basically it all right but now we'll go ahead and move remove this so uh, it's gonna be let's see one of these ah right there these are like a little shoulder bolt because that spool has to move because it's hooked to the to the uh, idle mixer screw and I'll kind of show all that. See this little shoulder looking bolt with a steel washer. Um, but when we go through the reassemble of the carburetor when I'll actually start talking more about all that stuff. Okay, it only takes two of those. So basically that's what it looks like. And there's your spool, and then you want to pull that spool out. What I do, sometimes you can, sometimes they come out real easy, you can pull them out, but I've got this from the parts house, just a brake tool, and uh, I just cut a notch in it. So I kind of go behind 
right here. That's where the idle mixer screw is straight down. Well, it's hooked to that. You'll see when you take your cover off. And I kind of go behind it with this. And pop it off. This one actually came out pretty easy, so you may have to check this this ball joint. It's like a ball, uh, I don't know what you really want to call it, but it's ball shaped and uh, it rides in there. And then here's your uh, metering spool. Let's see, and it just goes right around. And it's got a spring on it. Looks like that. Again, I'll explain all that when we put it back together. If you look real close, that's your pointer. See, it's your little point right there. That's the pointer, kind of like top dead center when you put in your cam on there. See the little mark? So, that's cool. <coughs> so it's got a lot of cool little features. But so far, simple. All right, so the next thing to do if we're going to go full disassemble, you're going to have to take this here out. This is what holds the cam. Usually it'll come right off of the set of pliers or even the needle nose I have here. If not, you can tap it when we get the other handle part. Because it just kind of goes up. Oh, there it is. So that little piece there. Now, the only thing left in here is the idle mixer screw right there. This thing's long-winded, so we need to take that out. And use these. You should be able to. Some of them come out tight because the threads are jacked. Some of them come out easy. This is going out really nice. Very long winded. There you go. There's that's the idle mixture screws. The only idle mixture on the carburetor and that goes in right there and pulls that spool up and down pulls it like that and of course that's what's going to move that pointer which is up against that cam there so basically it just goes in that slot all right so that's it this is empty this part's ready for you to clean and do whatever if you wanted if you only want to go so far with the with the uh build on it if you wanted to replace some of those parts or whatever that's all i never take the vent tube out i kind of like leaving it in there it's like a press lock fit they did from the factory so you can see it right here so i really don't like to mess with it but anyway that part's empty so next i go ahead and i just get this um base plate out of the way um, this has got two different looks like two different threads in here. Like I say, it's been messed with. So it's going to take probably two different atoms. Pretty simple. So far, there's been nothing really tough about it. As you see, it just kind of comes apart very easy. All right, this is going to be a different size. What size are you? Two more left in here, and like I said, the other one's been replaced to a different size. These things are all, these, this is probably a late 80s carburetor here. So it's been around a while. There's the base plate. That's all there is to it. There's the base plate, just a square bore is all it is. All right. All right. It had silicone on it. Not really recommended at all, but there's silicone on the base plate. And here's the gasket. And that's it. Okay, look at that. That thing's 
So here's the gasket, you'll be replacing that for sure. This is silicone on. Uh, I'll worry about scraping it out on the later when we go to the cleaning. All right, now we'll go ahead and take these air doors off. First, you gotta take the rubber flaps. These are rubber flaps right here. They're actually backfire flaps. So what happens is that if you backfire in your carburetor, you gotta release that pressure. So those things will blow up like this. If it backfires to release the pressure, that's, that's a must in any, anything that's, that can backfire. You know, you gotta, have, you gotta release that pressure somehow. So I'll kind of explain that too. Three, three little screws hold the rubber flaps in. You can make them out of leather. They come pretty thin from the factory anymore, the last ones I've seen. These I noticed were a little thicker. These are like twice as thick as. See these, these well, yeah, I don't have a factory one here to show you. But basically, this will come off too, this metal piece. It's just stuck on there from being there so long. But if there's a backfire, see, it, it would blow these up like this. Okay, and that's why these, you'll notice, are slotted. See, the air door is slotted to let that pressure out. So they'll backfire like that. But they gotta lay flat when you're running to make to make the inventory work. You know, because you have to have it to make the air move these course they have to be be flat okay again we'll explain all that and I'll put it back together all right so far so good I like it when things are kind of easy almost like a reed valve on your two-stroke, you know? We used to put the cage on there, but we did usually just use this and leave the cage off so you can really get those to open. Okay, and there's the air doors. See, so now you can kind of see the slots. See that they're slotted? So we'll go ahead and take those air doors off. Two screws hold each one. There it is, see. Again, once these are on it, that was, that's what makes it solid when the air is going past it. But if it was the backfire, see, poof. All right. So, now, Set up. I really can't stress so much how simple this is so far. I mean, really nothing crazy. Everything just kind of bolts together. It's almost like, looks like a puzzle. It's kind of bolts together. Okay, so there you go. Bad boy, there it is. All right. And the butterflies don't hang out. Well, I can't show you because I got the base plate on. I'll, I'll show you that when we go to do the reassemble. Okay, now those are off. We can go ahead and take the butterflies off. how fast that was, a lot, lot faster than conventional. There you go, that's your two blades. There's your two butterflies right there. Easy, it came off easy. Look at that bad boy. Man, I like these things. All right, now, let's go ahead and take this rod here off because we're gonna take this accelerator pump off. Okay, now, 
there's two ways of doing this. You can take the little clip off right here, so you can just leave this rod on there, so that way you'll have less pieces to, and we'll probably just do it that way. That way you have less pieces to put in your box or in your little bag or whatever you're gonna do. So we just gotta take that clip off, which is one small part. I hate messing with them. Can't see. Just like that. That was quick and easy. Right, right there. Okay. Let's just put that there. Now, so basically, see that that left that off. Instead of just taking it off here, at least they'll stay together for right now. So now we'll take this off. There's six bolts, and these things get crazy sometimes. And these will strip out. Um, and there's oh, there's a spring. There's a diaphragm, of course. Then there's a little spring and a little ball up in this area right here. So I always lay it this way. And unfortunately, I have a vacuum seal on this bed. So I always like to lay it somewhat flat, like this, so that ball doesn't try to go crazy in the spring and everything. I don't know, it's just better to me going on the side, but you can actually go in it any way you really want to, whatever you're comfortable with. All right, so we gotta find another Allen that'll fit these. And they feel loose already. It could be a good sign. Uh, we'll tilt it once I get these things out more. Actually, leave that top one kinda in, because that's where that ball is. I kind of got ahead of myself there. Mm. All right. I don't know if I'm going to be able to show. I guess I can do it somehow. So you gotta put pressure right here. Let me see. So you gotta kinda like put pressure, you know, on this with your fingers when you take those last screws out because it has a spring under the diaphragm just like any other diaphragm would be on anything. So I just kinda put pressure on it. Hopefully the ball and the spring don't shoot everywhere. Alright, so usually it's going to be right up here on top. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. I'm try to move this real slow. Okay, here's the spring, the big spring that would go under the trying to do this easy, the diaphragm here. Okay, here is, let's see if I got a way of doing this. There's the little spring I was telling you about. Right there. Okay. Then, should be a ball. Nice, huh? See that? And there's the ball. So, that's all there is to it, right there. So, you got that ball, that spring, the big spring. Now, here's your diaphragm which this thing is uh oh man it's rotted this one's junk see so for sure changing that there you go so that's it right there and there is one more little piece i'm going to show you right now 
Um, but here's here's the assembly here. Is right here. Where this part, where that spring and ball goes, and on this part up here, there's a little O-ring. Let me see if I can get it in there. Kind of go in here like this. Hold it flat. There you go. So this little O-ring, the little O-ring right there. Sits over that hole right there. Again, I'll be showing all this when we go back to the, doing the assembly of it. But I just thought I might want to say it now in case someone gets ahead ahead of me on this and already ready to put it together. But there you go. So that was it. That was basically the tedious part of it so far. So now, basically, that's all done, and we're down to just all this stuff. But it doesn't mean you have to take it all off because what we're trying to do is get this back plate off. So, so the only takeoff minimal is the way I like doing it. But so let's just see. Um, basically, we can give it one shot by just doing. Let me see. Let's take. I'm gonna try something. No, well, yeah, let's take them off. That way, it makes it more for like a tree dis disassembly. Because you might have to remove for some reason. This is your idle screw right here. So we can go ahead and see. We can go ahead and take this idle screw out. Idle screw, and it's got a little spring on it. Go ahead and let's see, we'll take this, this, okay. We're gonna go ahead and take this C clamp off, or what do you want to call it? E clamp, C clamp, I mean not clamp, but a clip right here. I'm so blind, get my light. Alright. See if I get this one off without it going crazy. that one okay so that releases from that there's another one right here we're going to take that one off we'll take this link bar off right here that one off. A couple of small parts on huh? and just take that link bar off. Now that that's off of there, we have a, I call this my throttle stop, but there's a little guy right here. There's a little guy right here and you can see that he's like threaded right here. That, that makes, that's the setting so that if you, you won't over center the butterflies Again, that's going to be showed when I go put it back together. You can move that in so the butterflies don't over-center, okay? Or you can actually screw it the other way and screw it way in. That way, you can almost act, act like a little bit of a throttle stop because it'll actually close the butterflies on some of them almost uh, three-quarters of the way. So if you wanted to, uh, for some reason... close the butterflies a little bit. You can do it with, with this little guy too. There we go. Let's go ahead and just get them out of the way. It's like a long set screw. Right there, see so it's like a long set screw. I call it my factory throttle stop. 
Alright, let's go ahead and uh, remove the tension spring. The spring here, that's the tension spring for the air doors. Again, you can go any route you want as far as what you take off next or whatever, but that's the spring for the for the for these doors here for the tension. And I just threw down some bolts in there, screw or something. Let me see. Oh, oh another one. Cool. All right. And you take this out. This is your. You can twist this to make that spring tighter or looser. Your adjustment. It's going to play hardball with me. There we go. Basically, it looks like that there. The spring hooks in that little hole right there, and you can move, screw this in and out for tension. there move it in and out all right so again that comes later now if you get lucky pull this shaft out as one assembly instead of mess with that spring and everything you'll have to mess with this spring here of course and there's a little dust hopefully that comes in the kit got a little dust pad right there because you have roller bearings. Your Predator has a roller bearing. Some of them have bushings, but this, this one here is a roller bearing. They actually don't go that bad. Um, let's see if I can... I don't know if you can see it or not, but that is a roller bearing, okay? Uh, I'm trying to... How can I do that? There you go. Yeah, it's a roller bearing. But you figure they're only moving, you know, like this, but for a long time. But they've always feel a hair loose, but I've never had any of them lock up or anything. What I actually use, believe it or not, is uh, air tool oil, like you put in your impact gun and stuff. That's what I kind of lube those up with. I, why I started doing that, I, I have no idea, but that's what I use. Now, this one, same thing. Got roller bearings, comes right out. Look at that, this is sweet. Came right out, no problem. And uh, again, they feel loose, but even when you put brand new ones in, they're, they're, they're loose feeling. I don't, I don't know why exactly. They could have made them a little tighter, but that's, that's the way it is. Now, now we're good to go. So we're just down to these two guys here. So if all goes well, should be able to take this screw out. <clears throat> this screw, no, not that one. Let me do that right here. <clears throat> take that one out. Again, this is why you want to use little baggies, like freezer baggies, so you'll know what screw with, 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 with what. There you go. It's off. Oh, let me see. Okay, so now you're just down to the bare guy right here. Bare plate. So I'll just go ahead and take these off. Wrong one. Which one is it? I wish I had a little T-handle set, it'd be a lot better, but unfortunately I don't. So you have to bear with me. Now if the other shafts come out easy, then we're on. We're home free. Oh, 
Okay, the potato wagon roaring. Supposed to have thunder, thunder uh, storm. After a while, to hear him coming. Yeah, if the top shafts come off good, then we're set home free. I've had to put the screws back in before and kind of tap and where that's from. I think they're right there. They got dowels. This plate has basically dowel pins also, which makes it kind of tough. But Let's do this. That one in a little bit. Sometimes this works, but just don't get real aggressive. Sometimes I put these two screws back in. a little tapping hammer kind of pick it up and see if it'll all right not gonna not gonna do it today oh it's my place got silicone on it that gas has been silicone too going crazy. Here comes the thunder. Alright, this is... I dropped my screws there, didn't I? So, this will be the only part that's going to give us fits, only because it's been silicone, I can see it. beans. Oh, these shafts come out nice. See, so we'll clean those up and everything. That's it. Yeah, oh yeah. See, there's one dowel came off with this. You can see it right, you can see it right here. The other dowel stayed in, so we'll do something about that. Roll, here's your other roller bearings right there. And here's your spray bar right here in the center. This is what all what lets all that fuel go through there when that air goes through and passes this spray bar it just starts dumping the fuel try to be easy because you can break them hopefully this one comes right out if it's not we'll break it too okay, you just gotta kind of wiggle it oh the baby's in there like i say try not to break the little there we go Okay, and this hole here, you got to put a, there's an O-ring that goes in there, and it's right, you can see that it's still on here, it's right here, that little O-ring goes right there, and again, that'll be shown when we, and there's a spray bar, fuel goes in here, has all these holes on both sides. Of course, uh, this side's blocked. That way the fuel goes in and it just 
floods out. Well, not, well, I shouldn't say flood. It's only going to give what what you need as you're pulling these butterflies are by air demand. So as the air moves them, it's going to pull fuel with this. Okay, that's it. So basically, again, there's those other shafts come out really nice. Nothing, nothing was bad. That's it. Now, if I wasn't talking and demonstrating, you could tear one of these apart really quick if you think about it. I mean, uh, pretty fast. So, that's it. Everything's done. Nine, 930 CFM right there. Uh, with, of course, with everything else in the way, like the blades and doors. But you can get, I know, 970 because I've done it. We've got, actually got plus, 970 plus, just by going here. And there's things you can do in here and also in, in the uh, base plate itself. So, all right, guys. Uh, man. That was cool. Came apart really nice. All right. And stay tuned and uh, I'll clean all this up really good and I'll make another video. Probably show some other little things we can do and then we'll do the reassemble. All right, guys. All right. Thanks a lot for hanging in there with me and I'll catch you on round two. Thanks.